And having gotten through the threats uh, in regard to access control, uh, well, uh, there's that word control. We in security tend to be known as controls freaks. Uh, not necessarily control freaks, although an awful lot of people think we are that too. But uh, we like controls. We have controls. We have controls and countermeasures and safeguards, all basically different ways of describing the same type of stuff. And in regard to our controls, we like them so much that we divide them up into groups. Uh, we have various ways. Um, if you come from a uh, military background or an American government background, you're probably familiar with the list, which we'll get into uh, eventually, of uh, corrective, detective, preventive, compensating, etc., etc. Uh, controls, I think there's about seven different uh, layers in that model. Um, but if you uh, are from a business background, you're probably more familiar with the simple three-way split that we have in terms of administrative, technical, and physical controls. Um, now, uh, we'll, we'll get into them and, and that sort of thing, but just to, to mention, um, I, when I started teaching this stuff, uh, an awful lot of people were trying to fit uh, one of the models into the other, and they really don't. I mean, they are orthogonal, and so in order to prove this, I made up what I referred to as the controls matrix, uh, just as a teaching tool to show that uh, these different ways of dividing the controls were, in fact, different ways of dividing the controls. And um, that, uh, when I had developed it and published it, uh, turned out to be uh, yet another uh, reasonable uh, breakdown framework um, that you can use to assess a system in terms of are there areas that are, are missing in terms of what kind of controls, countermeasures, safeguards you should be using. Uh, but, uh, as I say, we can get into that once we've gone through the whole uh, of both sets of divisions of the uh, the controls. Um, to begin with, though, uh, for now, we'll just concentrate on the administrative, technical, and physical controls. And as I say, this is mostly um, business uh, that. Uh, takes this approach. I mean, for one thing, it's simpler. Uh, but also, um, it tends to be uh, easily understandable um, in terms of, of the breakdown. Um, the administrative areas, I mean, you know, this is primarily policy. Not solely, but primarily we're talking about policies here. We're talking about uh, our overall guidance for people, um, for our employees, for uh, our security workers, um, and everybody else that, that we're dealing with. So, um, you know, we're, we're dealing with that type of stuff. These are, these are the rules. These are uh, what we do. Now, it's interesting uh, to look at this um, in regard, again, to the pandemic. Uh, you know, the pandemic is on everybody's minds, so that's why I use so many illustrations here. But uh, the, uh, the mandates, um, the rules, the uh, uh, regulations that came out in regard to uh, things like masking, uh, things like which jobs you had to have uh, vaccinations uh, for. Um, those sorts of things, that, those are all in the administrative sphere. 
Uh, now, in, in terms of the pandemic, people just tended to refer to them as mandates. But, you know, that is, that's, that's the policy, that's the regulations, that's uh, the, the procedures, the standards, so forth. And so that is, uh, you know, in, in terms of the pandemic itself, uh, that is the area uh, that we in security overall uh, know of and, and refer to as administrative controls. So all of those come into that administrative area. Uh, then there are the technical controls. And uh, as with security, an awful lot of, the, you know, these are our tools. Uh, these are our security tools. These are our firewalls. These are our antivirus systems. These are, you know, whatever it, it may be, our, our biometric access controls, <coughs> our, um, uh, our passwords, and <coughs> everything that goes into supporting them. Those are the technical controls. And an awful lot of people get bogged down in, you know, that's security. Of course, that's not security, as I pointed out in security management. You've got to be able to manage it. <clears throat> and in the same way, uh, with regard to the pandemic, all the medical stuff, the treatments in hospital, um, you know, sending somebody to the hospital when they needed oxygen, uh, the... Uh, relatively few uh, drug treatments that were available. You know, that's uh, a part of that area. Um, the, uh, the, uh, the vaccines, you know, that's, that's part of the, the medical work. And again, you know, an awful lot of people see that as the only thing that goes on during a pandemic. It's not. Uh, but that is, as with security, that is the technical uh, component of our controls. And so those are, those are the technical controls that we use to uh, limit a pandemic. And those are, uh, you know, we, we talk about we have our technical controls in, in security to limit risks, losses, and so forth. Um, and then the physical uh, controls. Now, again, you know, physical security is, is there. Um, we have various uh, physical controls, even in some of our, our technical aspects. Um, and uh, in regard to the, the pandemic, these tended to be called engineering controls. Uh, because, for example, during the pandemic, we had uh, face shields for certain uh, workers. We had, uh, you know, we had shields. We had plexiglass shields going up in all the stores. Um, that's, uh, again, you know, was referred to during the pandemic as engineering. It, these are physical controls. These are uh, controls that were helping uh, deal with uh, the infection control in the pandemic. They're, you know, they're physical. They're physical barriers. Uh, they tend to be more visible and, and so forth. Again, this is all stuff that uh, comes under the category of physical controls in regard to our administrative, technical, and physical division of controls in security.